You know, the internet has come a really long way. In fact, we built three internets over the last decades. First one is the, uh, the wide internet. Uh, we all know it. It has redefined the economy of the 21st century. And uh, we went on then to the, uh, develop the mobile internet. We went from 2G, 3G. Uh, now we have 4G. And uh, tomorrow, like almost literally tomorrow, we're going to be on 5G. And the 5G internet experience actually is almost as good as the, or the 4G one is almost as good as the wire. Uh, internet. In fact, you never ever look up at the little logo saying 3G or 4G uh, as long as you're on, on 4G, right? The only reason you look up is when you drop down maybe to 2G or 3G. So we've done a great design and then we moved on. We said, what else could we connect? We have connected uh, uh, computers. We, are, we have connected every single uh, mobile device on the planet. You know, what else can we do now? So we decided, hey, let's connect things. So we designed the things internet or the internet of things as we know. It. It's uh, been in making for quite a while. Technology is ready, maybe demand not so much. But at some point, I presume, we will have connected loads of sensors and actuators all over the planet. And time goes by, and then in 2014, 15, I was kind of thinking, you know, we have done this now for decades. What is the next internet? What's going to be the next big thing which will reshape uh, uh, humanity? And the inspiration came when our uh, King's College doctors came back from uh, uh, Sierra Leone Leona treating really the Ebola crisis. Kings was leading UK's national response down there. And they were saying a very simple thing. They're saying, you guys, you know, we really lack skills down in Sierra Leone. No one of the doctors wanted to travel because it is a very contagious and dangerous area. And the skills they needed weren't very complicated. We're not talking about surgery. Uh, we're talking about palpation, taking temperature, a human being being with a human being. And I thought, hey, why don't we just bring together our best networking technologies with our best robotic technologies, throw a little bit of uh, AI in there, because that was already hip back then in 2014, and we build a new internet, which would allow me to virtualize skills no matter where I am. So I could imagine any doctor in the world helping any patients anywhere else. And uh, yeah, I gave it a name. I called it the Internet of Skills, and uh, I want to talk you through that journey we've gone through in the last years in designing that type of Internet. And I thought, you know, one's up and running, maybe in the year 2020, maybe it's year 2025, 2030, it would enable a whole lot of really exciting applications. You know, people could teach me how to paint, or I could actually teach people how to play piano no matter where they are.